you know, I think I'm going to start wearing my glasses backwards. That's a good idea. No, I can see more things because it makes the glass closer to my eyes. He's, you know, for a smart man, he's not very scientific. Welcome back to the show. We are going to do letters because you sent Kathy Coleman to go feed your goats. Can you believe that? The poor woman comes all the way here to be a guest on our show and she's attending to farm duties. You could feed your own bloody goats. She seemed to enjoy it. All right, let's do some mail. Well, then we're going to get back to Prisoners of the Lost Universe. I don't know if I like the title of this film. Prisoners of the Lost Universe. It makes no sense. Exactly. They're just traveling. They're not. They're, they're tourists. It should be called Tourists of the Lost Universe. I could be wrong. All right, first letter is from Jim in Moraga, California. Just Jim. Let's see if there's, oh, there's, oh, there's actual cash. Look at this. I don't know if we need to do a close-up on an American $5 bill, do we? I think they know right. what it looks like. Jim in Moraga, California. He goes, dear Vincent, you better find out what the purpose of that bill is for. Uh, dear Vincent, if I may, I do believe I need to bring to your attention some constructive criticism. Number one, last year my brother-in-law mailed you $5 to increase your budget on your movie selections. I don't recall this, but I bet you you know who stole it. Now that it's been a year and we have seen the selections, there obviously must be some change left over. I'm now contributing another $5. Hopefully this will assist you in upgrading your selections this year. Number two, it's apparent that you and Livingston have a tendency to pick on Tangella over anything she does. You know, you need to spend an afternoon in this household and you'll not think this way for much longer. An hour sir. would be sufficient. An hour would be sufficient, yes. May I bring to your attention, she is the only one out of the three of you that waves and smiles to the camera. You know, he's right. But, you know, she's the only one that doesn't talk as well, so she's got a mime. You both may want to take some lessons from her on interaction with the audience. Well... You know, you make some good points there, Jim, but um, I think it's Livingston who needs to learn to wave and smile at the camera. I sort of wave and smile, don't I? Not? Maybe. Sort of. Sort of. Oh, and you got the money back. That's good. All right, we'll, we'll spend that in a, in a good place, Jim. All right. This, uh, oh, this is interesting. All right. This is from Nancy Almeida. Almeida, that sound about right? Almeida. All right. Uh, and she is from Rhode Island. All right. Hi, Vincent Tangella and Livingston. This is Nancy from Rhode Island. My husband and I came across your show last year on YouTube. Being on the East Coast, the show is on very late at night. So it has become our official Sunday morning breakfast show. You know, I always want to do a Sunday morning breakfast show. Hmm. No, but it would be like Good Morning America type show where it's like, you know, all chipper and then, you know, she's talking about fashion and things like that. Good Morning Transylvania, perhaps. Oh, that would be nice. You know, he's starting to get the kick of this whole thing. All right, so being on the East Coast, uh, the show's on very late at night, so official Sunday morning, I already said that. Love the movies that you show and also enjoy your guests very much. I bet you enjoy Kathy Coleman. Keep doing what you do and we will keep watching. I think Tangella has a way with fashion. Has she ever thought of modeling as a career? Yeah, she Models have to be nice to like the staff and the cameraman and all that. And I don't think she could do that. She would beat them. She doesn't like being told what to do. That's another thing as well. Uh, warmest wishes, best regards, Nancy. P.S. The Lizzie Borden house in nearby Massachusetts is currently up for sale in case you are looking for a creepy home on the East Coast, just a thought. You know, interesting you should bring that up, Nancy, because one, I saw that listing and I actually considered it and it's just too small. Mm. No, the Lizzie Borden house is too small for our staff and all my things. I mean, I couldn't even fit all my model railroad things in one room no. of that house. But the second thing is next week, is it next week? I think it's next week, if not, Next week, the week after, we're showing the Lizzie Borden movie with Elizabeth Montgomery. 
So now it's like serendipitous that she serendipitous, wrote. yes. Yes, serendipitous that she wrote to us talking about Lizzie Borden when we're going to show. It's like she's psychic. Perhaps. Or she could be psycho, but I think it's psychic. Thanks for writing, Nancy. Last letter. No. Nope. Two more. Two more. Seattle, Washington. Seattle, Washington. Brad Gunther. You know, I used to know a bloke named Gunther. That was his first name. Gunther. No, I wouldn't call him Gunther. I'm not German like you. Oh, this is interesting. Large envelope, small note. All right, uh, Brad Mann from Seattle. Now, is his actual last name Mann, or is he just saying, I'm a man named Brad? Mann is a name. Brad Mann from Seattle goes, really dig your show. Mr. Livingston is a cool cat. Not sure what that means. But Neither do I. Tangella is funny and scary at the same time. Keep up the great work. Also, can you show Adam H. Vampire, Brad from Seattle? Didn't we show that one once? I think we did, yeah. Adam H. Vampire. All right. We're probably due to show that again, so we will show that just for you, Brad, the man from Seattle. I think he's just indicating. I see what you did there. No, I think he's indicating what type of species he is. I could be wrong. Species. No. I could be wrong, but I'm seldom wrong. Once I thought I was wrong, I was merely mistaken. Gender is more like it. All right. So uh, this is from Fred Sanderson in Bellevue, Washington. Maybe he's friends with Brad because they live so close. Two from Washington. Same do we state. Pick up, do we pick up a station in Washington? Perhaps we do Maybe have. Maybe that's what happened. Uh, this is a long one. You too. My goodness. Uh, Fred Sanderson in Bellevue, Washington, you have to be more succinct. But we will rip through this as best we can. All right. Greetings and salutations, Mr. Van Dahl. Hello. My name is Frederick Sanderson, and I reside in Bellevue, Washington. I have a few questions I was hoping to ask you, and ideally, you'll answer over the air. They are as follows. Number one, who in God's name does your hair? I suspect nobody, and you simply hang your head out of your car window on the highway. You know, I did do that sometimes, but it's only to dry it, not to style it. Rather dangerous no, occupation. It gives me that surfer look. All right, number two. What is the issue with the young lady? Has she been clinically diagnosed as feeble-minded? I fear that she should be receiving professional psychiatric attention in a proper mental facility as opposed to running around your mansion building explosives and collecting exotic pets. No, I guess he's, he's talking about you. All right. Number three, why does your butler continue working unappreciated in what amounts to be a hazardous environment? Your face. Obviously, the man has an education well beyond that which is needed in his current occupation. And just as obviously, he could find better work with less risk at a university or a research facility. And number four, uh, can you please show the creature from the Black Lagoon? All right, <clears throat> let's run through these. Uh, number one, who does my hair? It's a wonderful woman named Colleen. She does a wonderful job, so don't judge. Uh, number two, what's the issue with the young lady? She's, she's normal in my eyes, so maybe you and Mr. Livingston can compare notes, but she's normal to me. Uh, number three, why does your butler continue working and appreciate? He is quite well paid. That's why he's continues to stay. Look at that face. Now, you should see his personal automobile. He drives a nice car. And number four, can you please show Creature from the Black Lagoon? No. Thanks for riding, Fred, and we hope you have a wonderful evening. And Anymore? that was that. That's that. All right. If you'd like to send us a note of your own, send it to the email address you see down here. Or if you'd like to send a package in the mail or an envelope, like Brad, the man from Seattle, send it to this address you see here. We'll be right back with Kathy Coleman in a moment, but first let's get back to Prisoners of the Lost Universe. Hi, this is Philip from Austin, Kentucky. I want to say thank you for showing Carnival of Souls and having Candace Hillegas a special guest. It really made it a better experience all around. Thanks again, guys. <laughs> 